You're watching the show with everything you could ever want to make or do. Right at your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And here's what's on today's show. Find out how to turn this rubbish into these fantastic presents with a bit of fingertips know-how. And in Cryptic Fingertips, we give you more code-cracking clues. And meet the Fingertips dog. Find out how to make your very own invisible pet. And for details of today's makes, you can video the show and play it back, look on our website or grab your pen and paper now and jot it down straight away. If you're anything like me, then your desktop's going to look something like this. Very untidy, covered in postcards, suites and phone numbers. So we put our heads together at fingertips and we came up with this. The Venus Flytrap Tidy. And before you can say fingertips, your desktop will look something like this. Instead of grabbing flies, the Venus Flytrap Tidy grabs all those bits and pieces that were littering up your desk. Now, to make your Venus Flytrap Tidy, the first thing you need to get yourself are some pegs. I'm going to use these red plastic ones, but you could just use some wooden ones and paint them. It's up to you. So, take your peg and put it onto a piece of red card and then just draw around it slightly bigger than the peg itself and make a kind of leaf shape, just like that. And then, cut this shape out and you'll get something that looks like this. And then, use this one as a template because you need to cut out another 11 because you need 12 of these in total. You now need 12 green leaves that are bigger than the red one. So put a red one onto a bit of green card and draw around it to get a bigger version like this. Now do this with all 12 and then cut them out. Now once you've cut those out, you'll have 12 green leaves and 12 red ones. So take a red one and a green one, put a blob of glue on the back of the red one and just press it down on top like that. So you have a nice Venus flytrap leaf there. You need to do this to all 12 of them so you have a whole load of them. And we're now going to make the stems. And for this, we're going to use gardening wire because it's nice and bendy. And you need a double ruler length piece. So let's just measure this up like that. There we go. Cut that just there very carefully. There we have it. And now we're going to bend this over so it's double thickness like that. And carefully put the double end bit into the hinge of the peg. So that goes all the way through there and you just wrap it round to secure it in place. And this is going to make the grabby mouth, you see. And now we want the stem to look more realistic. So get yourself a bit of green tissue paper and a bit of sticky tape. Tape that in place just like that. And then you start wrapping it all the way around the stem and go all the way down to the bottom. Now, once you've covered the whole stem like this, just wrap it around the bottom there, get a piece of tape just to secure it in place like that. And then take your leaves that you've made earlier on and on the red side, put some nice strong glue. Now you want to stick one leaf to each side of your peg, just like that. Do this to all your stems and you'll have a whole set of grubby mouths. And we're now going to plant the Venus flytrap tidy. And for this, you need to cut some green leaf shapes from some green card. And you can see that I've drawn on some veins to make it look more realistic. And it's really easy to do. All you do is get a green felt tip pen and draw a line down the middle like that. And a few coming off the sides. And there you have it. And now here's a great fingertip tip. To make them curled, all you have to do is run a pencil or a pen along the back. And the more you do it, the curlier it will go. It's great, isn't it? Then you just stick them to the side of your plant pot with some sticky tape like this. There we go. And do this all the way round. And once you've stuck them all down, you'll have a lovely plant pot that looks like this. Now, grab your load of hungry mouths and just bend round the bottom of your wire like this. They'll stand in your plant pot nicely. Then pop them inside your pot. And now you can begin to arrange them however you like. And when you're happy, just cover the hole in the bottom of your plant pot and then fill it with sand to give it extra weight. Now, to make it look more realistic, you can get yourself some bird seed and sprinkle this on the top of your Venus flytrap like that. Looks good to Oh, you? that looks brilliant. And there you have your Venus flytrap tidy. And now your hungry houseplant is ready for lots of juicy phone numbers, some tasty tickets 
and mouth-watering postcards. Now, if you'd like to make your very own Venus flytrap tidy, then why not check out the Fingertips website? We'll give you the address at the end of the show. Just click on Top Makes and there's all the information you need. And your Venus flytrap tidy can be any size you like. How about making a tiny weeny one using miniature pegs and a tiny little pot? Or even have a go at making a huge one like this. But beware, these Venus flytrap tidies have quite an appetite. <coughs> Manners? A minute. Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends you can find around your home. Now today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all it takes. Just Quite a bit of stuff. There's a few bits today, yeah. But it is a good one minute make and you've got to try and guess what Fern's trying to make before the time runs out. Fern, are you ready? I'm a bit nervous about this one today, it's a bit <laughs> hard. do it, <laughs> trust me. Okay, here we go. Okay. On your marks, get set, go! Okay, green pen. To draw out a third of that. There we go. Colour all that in. There we go. Nice and quickly, not too neat. Can I just say all already 10 seconds have gone? Uh, can I just say stop putting pressure on me, please? <laughs> there we go. Right. Now third in red. So colour this one in. Can I now just say you are really behind because right. now 20 seconds stop have gone. Stop putting me off. Right. There we go. Now I just need to... How long have I got, sorry, did you say? Well, 27 seconds have gone. Oh, I just drew the table as well. There we go. It doesn't have to be neat, so I won't worry about colouring it all in perfectly or anything. You can't do it. 35 I seconds. I can, I can do it, I can. <laughs> now, two holes. Put a pencil through some modelling clay and that side. Now, get me string with some tape on the end. 45 seconds. Ah, I'm fumbling. Right, there we go. And put that through there. 10 seconds left. Eight. Oh, 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 yeah, I did it. 52 Woo. seconds, very good. And watch this. This is so cool once you get it working. All you need to do is get your colour circle near the middle of your string, hold both ends like this, and then just give it a good spin. You have to get some speed up on this one. And look at that. It turns a whitey colour with all the colours mixed together. And no, it's not magic. <laughs> when red, blue and green are combined and they're spun together, it turns into that colour. How about weird, that? isn't it? I know, it's really strange. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you've got access to a computer and you want to check out our Fingertips website, we'll give you the address at the end of the show. And all you have to do is click on to One Minute Makes and then click on to Spinning Colour Circle and all of the details will be there. And you've got your very own templates as well. So go on, get yourself on a spin and see if you can beat the clock. Rubbish. Rubbish. And more rubbish. So how can we turn all of this rubbish into this? It looks fantastic, doesn't it? By recycling this into this. Magic, isn't it? Well, it's not really once you've got the know-how to get recycling with fingertips wrap rubbish. Now I'm going to show you how to make the paper. The first thing you need to do is raid your kitchen, get yourselves an old washing up bowl or a deep tray like this one here and some vegetable oil. Now once you've got hold of that, you need some poster paint, acrylic paint and some old paper. Now first of all, in my deep tray I've mixed some water and some poster paint. Now it doesn't matter how much poster paint you put in, but the more you do put in, the darker your colour will be, so it's up to you. And then, you need to put a blob of vegetable oil inside your mixture, like that, that should do. And then get an old spoon or a paintbrush or a stick or something and just give it a nice stir around like this till you get blobs all over the place. You might need to give it quite a good stir. There we go, you're getting lots of droplets all over the place. Once you've done that, you need to get yourselves three cups and line them up and put a different colour paint in each cup. So first of all, I'm going to do some red here, bit of acrylic paint, just squeeze that in, like that, and then some poster paint on top of that, and some vegetable oil too, a nice equal amount of each, and then give that a stir so it becomes a nice smooth paste. Now the next bit is my favourite bit, all you need to do is get your paintbrush with some of your mixture on the end of it, and just give it a good flick, it's quite messy this bit, there we go. Flick it all over the place, like that. Let's get some blue in there as well. There we go. Oh, lovely, look at that. And a bit of yellow, I think, as well. Get a nice blob of yellow on the end. Give it a flick. And then after you've got all your different colours in, you can give it another stir as well. So just get your stick back and stir it all around so you get some nice patterns. Look at that. That's looking really good. Now, get your sheet of rubbishy paper. 
plain and boring now, but wait till you see what happens next. All you need to do is lay it into your mixture like that. Keep it there for a few seconds and pull it back out. Hey, look at that. Then lay it down flat somewhere and get a piece of kitchen towel and just blot off the excess vegetable oil. So just lay it over the top like that and blot it down. Oh, it looks really pretty. Look at that. Wow, check that out. And now you can get covering anything you like. You can use it to cover gift boxes, pencil boxes, which you can store all your stuff in, even a pencil pot. And you know what? You can cover your pencils too. How nice do they look? And the best thing about it is it's cheap and easy to make. So go on, get flexing your fingertips and get recycling with the fingertips wrapped rubbish. This is Cryptic Fingertips, the part of the show that deals with the murky world of passing secrets and swapping messages. Now, messages can be delivered in all sorts of ways. Oh, the brick with the note attached is the more painful method. Ouch. And normally messages are in code. Let's see what this one says. Well, it's a load of nonsense. Of course it is. It's from Fern. But believe it or not, there is a coded message hidden on this piece of paper. And with the help of the fingertips code breaker, we should be able to read what it says. I'll just wrap it round like this. And hopefully, all of the letters should join up. Here we go. Hmm. I wonder what it's going to say. And it says... Let's have a look. This system was used by the Romans. That's true, you know. More cryptic tips on our website, and we'll give you the address at the end of the show. Now, if you want to give this a go at home, then you're going to need two felted pens that are exactly the same. One for you, and one for your friend who's going to read the cryptic message. Cut a strip of paper from the side of an A4 sheet about one centimeter wide, and then tape it to the end of one of your felt-tip pens like this. Then wrap the paper round like that, so all the paper joins up, and then you need to write your secret message. Here we go. And I'm going to write... Oh, don't look! It's a secret! And when your friend receives the message, they wrap the paper around the identical pen and crack the code. Keep this to yourself. Now, don't worry if your message falls into enemy hands, because if they wrap the paper around a pen or pencil that isn't the same size, it would just be gobbledygook. So get you and your mate an identical pen each, and have a go at sending your very own cryptic fingertip messages. Oh, what does this one say now? Oh. Sorry about the brick. Whoa! Oh. Shit! Hey! For all you jokers out there here... Oh, you bad dog! Ooh! As I was saying, for all you jokers out there, here's a mate that'll take you for a walk, guaranteed to amuse yourself and any unsuspecting passers-by. It's our very own fingertips pet, the invisible dog. Now, you may think there's not much to make if it's invisible, but to give the impression of a feisty Fido, you need a lead that won't go floppy. Now, first of all, you need to get yourself a wire hanger and you need to stretch it out, and this can be quite tough, so get someone to help you out. Now, when you've straightened out your coat hanger, you need to trap it in the middle of some wide ribbon. And the easiest way to do this is lay the ribbon out, Put the uh, coat hanger in the middle with an overlap at either end. You'll see why in a second. Um, fold the ribbon over and secure it in place with some PVA glue. Or you could use what we're using, which is double-sided tape. And look, you can see the hangers in there. And let's put the final bit down like that. Now I'm going to show you how to make the handle. And the way you do it is feel for where the coat hanger end is, which is just about there. Fold the ribbon over and get another bit of ribbon like this. Again, a bit more double-sided tape on either side, and then neatly put it in place like that, fold it over, and the last bit just there, and your handle is done. Now I'm going to show you how to make the collar. Ah, oh, nice collar like yours. Now I'm going to show you how to make the collar. What you need to do is get another piece of wide ribbon and fold it over and stick it down together, and then mark a hole every three finger widths apart. So put three fingers down and make a little dot, and keep doing this all the way along your collar. Once you've done that, get some modelling clay and pop it under one of your marks, 
and just push your pencil through to make a hole. It can be quite hard, so just keep wriggling your pencil around. And once you've made your holes, get some paper fasteners and push them through your ribbon like this, fold the back over like that, and there you'll have your nice stud on your dog collar. And you need to do this all the way along it until it looks like this. Now to make your dog collar shape, just loop your collar around, get one more paper fastener and just push it through and fold the back over. And there you have your collar. You all right, Stephen? Get off, you naughty boy, get off! Now use the overhang of your lead just to loop round your collar and put two more paper fasteners to hold it in place and fold them over at the back like that. And now, so you don't lose your invisible dog, you need to get yourself a little bell like this and you need to put it on top of a paper clip. Now just slot this onto your collar, like that, and there you have it. Your very own, instantly house-trained, fun fingertips pet. Come on in, Fern, you take that dog. All right, then. I've got this one. Whoop. And let's go walkies! <laughs> Next time on Fingertips, what would you do with an old milk container? Well, you're going to find out how to turn it into a heavyweight room guard. What do you bake your cakes in? In Food Fingertips, we show you how to make the fantastic flower pot cake. And it looks amazing. It is amazing. With a little fingertips know-how, you'll be able to balance anything on a point. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from today's programme, then just check out the Fingertips website. The address is on the screen. So we'll see you next time for more Fingertips. Bye! See ya! ya.